I have a 70 pound ball of fur named Diesel. I walk him three times a day. And if you're anything like me, I'm concerned when I'm walking out in these streets super early in the morning or really late at night. So here are some tips that I hope help you while you walk your fur ball. What's going on people? It's Lion from Lion's Guns. Now, I hate to get all doom and gloom, but yes, you should be concerned about your survivability while you're out there in these streets because they are not playing fair. If you're like me and you have a four-legged friend, a fur ball that you have to walk on a daily basis, and you don't have the luxury of a backyard that they can go potty outside, you have to be walking your dog. So here are some tips for you to help you if you're carrying a firearm for protection. Number one, preparation. Preparation, preparation, preparation. Yes, you have to take a lot of steps before you even step foot outside to make sure that you're in a better place. You have a fighting chance. Always be armed. You have a firearm, so take it with you. I know oftentimes we think we're just going down the block. We're just going in the alley. We're just going to the dog park nearby. But this is where the most trouble occurs, when people know your routine and know where you're going to be. Next. Always arm yourself in the same way. How do you unholster your firearm? The way you unholster your firearm should be the exact same way you unholster it if you're walking your pet. So not only should you draw your firearm from the same place, but you should also practice that way. And also practice without two hands. Us instructors are teaching everyone how to fire with a supporting hand. Unfortunately, the real world doesn't work like that. Sometimes you're gonna have that leash in one hand, sometimes you're gonna have that bag in another hand, or your, your purse or your book bag in one hand, or dog poop in the hand, and you're gonna have that firing hand. You should have that firing hand open at all times. And practice that unholstering method. Practice it at home at least one, two, five minutes a day, five minutes a week. Practice it one-handed, practice it one-handed, and carry a second magazine at all times. Part of preparation is having the right tools. That means your accessories. How do you carry your firearms? Do you carry it in a holster? Do you carry it in a tack bag? Do you carry it in a band? Do you carry it in your pocket? Either way, you wanna practice on holstering that firearm and you wanna have the right accessories. You don't want that firearm tumbling around in your pocket when you're looking for it in a jiffy. Dog bags, I know, sounds crazy. But this little tool is super handy. Number one, it comes with its own flashlight so I can illuminate dark spaces. It has all my dog bags ready. But what I also want to do is I want to take one of these dog bags or two and I want to already unravel it and open it. Because the last thing you want to be is outside vulnerable while you're trying to get this little thing open. I just can't seem to get it open. Have your dog bags ready in your pocket, ready to go for when your dog uses the bathroom, you're on it. Well, you're not like on it but experiment with a second set of keys you know that key set that you have that has the car key and your old house key and your work keys and that little tiny key that you have no idea what the hell it's for instead of using that even though that is a great weapon if you didn't need to use it why don't you have an exit strategy key, a key that only gets you inside your home or your complex in a safe way that way in the event that you need to get in there fast you don't have to fumble around for your keys your leash your leash should not be bigger than six feet. What you don't want is so much slack and your dog running away from you behind trees and pulling on you when you're in a really, really bad situation. Train your dog, train your dog. Your dog should be walking with you. It should not be walking you, all right? Your dog should not be tugging on you, pulling on you. The dog should be within five feet of you, enough to be able to do his business, but not so far that you're actually chasing after him or being pulled by him at the same time. I am no dog trainer. So if you need dog training tips, Go to PetSmart or something, I don't know. Your dog should know basic commands. Sit, stay close, come, go, stop. Take notice of the breed of dog that you There are many dogs out there that are highly sought after. French bulldogs, micro bullies, uh, bulldogs. These are the kind of dogs that thieves love because they can get top dollar for them. And oftentimes these breeds, they're kind of friendly to people. Wear comfy clothes. That's right, if you're coming home from work and you still got your heels on or you still got your work boots on and you have a couple layers and you still have your lunch bag, that might be a little problematic when you're in a pickle. Get inside, get dressed, get comfortable, comfortable shoes, as little layers as possible so you can go ahead and walk your dog in comfort. These days, what's really popular, especially in urban cities like Chicago, what's really popular is the blitz method. That means they're gonna come at you fast, hard with multiple people, all right? They're mostly catching people off guard with their backs turned, with their heads down, sitting in their car, looking down while they're petting their dog, dealing with their dog's poopage. So key number one while you're walking is keep your head on a swivel. What I always like to think of is dog street, street dog. 
dog street, street dog. It's preferred if you're walking down a one-way street that the direction of travel, you're walking towards it. Now, that doesn't mean that you neglect the opposite direction. You're just going to make sure that you can actually see the cars coming to you. Just because you can see the cars coming to you, though, does not mean that any threats behind you are just threats behind you. We're not looking at that. We're not paying attention over here. It's all up here. No, it doesn't work that way. Pay attention to your environment. Keep your eye on dark spaces. Keep your eye on oncoming traffic. Keep your eye on parked cars. Who's in them? Who's waiting around? Who looks like they don't belong? Keep your back away from the street. That means anytime your dog is doing his business, you're not just staring at the dog while they finish. Of course, you want to make sure your pet is being safe and making sure you keep an eye on them, make sure they're not eating anything off the ground or going to any unsafe places. At the same time, you want to keep your head on a swivel to make sure everyone around you and your environment can see that you are alert and focused the time of day. Always be cognizant of the time of day. Of course, you're more likely to experience something negative while it's more dark, while there's less people outside. Cross the street wherever you can. Who cares who you offend? We're not talking about being nice to people. What we're talking about is being safe. So whenever you see somebody coming, somebody waiting, cross the street, there's nothing wrong with that. Change your route. Do not take the exact same route to walk your dog every day. Change it up while walking. Get into the habit of walking your dog with your support hand. If you are a righty, your shooting hand is your right hand. So that hand should always be free from anything. So you should at the very least be able to get to your firearm in a split second. So what happens in the event of an attack? Now remember guys, here in the state of Illinois, brandishing is illegal. So you cannot just pull your firearm out on absolutely anyone. So what I like to do is train the lamb, L-A-M-B. That means your legs, your arms, your mouth, then your body, all right? Make sure that you can get out of the way as fast as possible. Before a problem comes to you, you're exiting wherever you can. A, your arms. Always keep your arms up wherever you can. It's not offensive and it gives you the space that you need to protect yourself in a split second decision. M, your mouth. It is okay to tell somebody, hey, can you do me a favor? Can you step back a little bit? Or maybe even make up a lie. Blame it on the damn dog. Hey, my dog's not friendly. Do you mind? Can you step back just a little bit? If someone walks up and invades your space, it is your responsibility to make sure that they understand that they are not welcome there. B, your body. Your posture will tell someone that you are ready or not. All right, so make sure your chest is up, your shoulders are back, and your legs are spread in the event you need to run or you need to arm yourself. No one should touch your dog. Is he friendly? No, he's not friendly. Do you mind if I pet him? I'm sorry, not today. No one should be touching your dog. That's just an invitation to let somebody get closer than you feel comfortable with. Poop is a great deterrent. A lot of times we end up with poop in our hand and that is a great way to deter someone from getting close to you. So carry it, make sure everyone sees you have it. All right, guys, hopefully these tips helped. I know it was long and there's a lot. But once you practice this and get in the flow of things, you're going to see that this is actually going to become second nature. And you're going to be a lot more alert, a lot more safe when you're out there in the streets with your four-legged friend. And he'll be or she'll be a lot safer as well. And you have yourself a happy dog and a happy life. Hopefully this helped. And if you are interested in getting yourself armed with a concealed carry license, please hit us up at Lions Guns on Facebook and on Instagram.